Hi guys, welcome back to uh, another episode and today we are uh, going to be putting on the FC and the XT60 and a uh, Crossfire Nano Receiver um, but as you can see from last time, last time I left you I, I showed you how to do one motor and obviously since then I've done uh, the other three um, so you can see here that we have three and what I did also do uh, with the FC that we're going to be using today uh, which is the Acon one, there is uh, a wiring harness for the SC which I put in here and just rooted it underneath and left it poking out the back here. But to start with today what we're going to do is get our XT60 on here and then, like I said in the beginning the reason I, I mounted the ESC um, sideways is because I like, uh, like my Alien, I like the XT60 coming up here. So. With the ESC you get an XT60 uh, with some nice soft silicon wire so I know that if I if I solder it on here and then obviously bend it up around it's going to be it's not going to be too stiff and it's not going to put some tension on here so what we need to do uh, obviously I don't want it too long but I want it around about there it's enough to reach the battery but obviously once the battery plugs in we'll wrap it up with the um, LiPo strap I could do with the aliens. So we need them about there. So what I'm going to do is move that to the side a minute. Gonna cut these. One. Two. Um, and what we need to do is obviously tin them as well. Uh, get them ready for as normal as I do, just roll them around my Stanley. Oh, my phone goes off. So I'm gonna, because it's such thick wire, um, I'm gonna make my solar and iron a little bit hotter this time. I'm going to look for 390, so I'll let that get nice and hot there. Uh, twist the ends, I like to twist the ends. It's an old habit, I suppose. I have peculiar ways of holding bits of wire, um, like my tweezers, because they've got this, this rubber grip on them. I can put them in there, and then uh, I don't know, they're not gonna, really going to go anywhere. Um, and I can use that to hold the wire wash that's in it. It's going to be sewed out. Okay. Let's clean off the sodium iron. We're up to temperature. So a nice bit of soda there. Obviously, the wire gets hot enough. There you go. There, it's, it's going to start to flow nicely there. Look. Cool. Same on the red. Obstacles. Soda. So look at that. Go nicely coated. Obviously, it's going to melt um, onto our ESC contact when we do it here. Also, because we're using everything at such a higher temperature, again, I am going to hold it with the tweezers. I don't know why, but I don't have a steady hand this morning. Um, for some bizarre reason. Get that pressed on there. 
and eventually the heat will go through to the soda that's also on the ESC that we tinned earlier. And boom. Look at that. Clean off sodium iron. Just got the soda and the iron there and the same this side. Okay, don't have to push down too hard on it, it's just enough. Boom! I don't actually need my Sony 9 that hot anymore, so let's turn it back down. I'm gonna go 340. There we go. Got the cool for a second, then I'll see there. Bash on top, we can bend that up around. Yeah, see, it's the way I like it. So, FC, uh, we are going to be using uh, this puppy. This is the Acorn, uh, it's a 30 30 stack, but it is the F7 uh, flight controller. Uh, it's my first time using this one, so um, you're gonna have to bear with me a second. So, facing frontwards. I don't know if people are going to say, oh, but you know, your your uh, motor alignment is all right because also we've rotated, but obviously in the late, when we go to the programming side, we'll show you how to remap the ESC so that they, um, so they all match. So there we go, to slot that on top. And what we could do actually, if we plug in Give it a couple of twists. So you got the slack on the wire there. Go and then plonk that on top. SC on. And obviously, I mean, I'll secure it. I secured the ESC down. Obviously, it's rubber mounted anyway with a couple of nylon uh, nuts. I'll do the same afterwards um, with the FC. But um, I can see it's very low profile in there. Um, but just look through it, make sure it's not touching anything at all. All right, uh, right. So, what we're going to need to do, uh, we are going to. I've already prepared the crossfire. I'll see, we'll do a different video for the crossfire receiver, but I've already prepared it. So, what I've done here is uh, crossfire receiver, obviously, an immortal T on it. We've got our uh, a ground, a live and our two signal wires here, RX and TX. Now this one, I've actually soldered in here into channel three, and this one is gonna connect directly to my Unify Pro, because I'm going to use the Crossfire protocol to change my VTX channel. Um, so this is the smart audio cable to the Unify Pro, which will be in the next video where we do the VTX and the camera. Um, but for the time being, we'll ignore this one, but we're only interested in these four here. So I've cut them, I've soldered them, and they're all prepared ready to sew it onto the FC. One thing we need to do is uh, prepare the pads on the FC itself. So we need to put some soda on them now. Five volt on the crossfire is what we need. Um, from what I understand, Stand. Um, looking here, the first pin at the bottom here, I need a pointer. Okay, so this pad here is our ground. There's our 3.3, there's our five. So I'm gonna use the five and the ground. Now being an F7, it doesn't matter where you, on what, on where you put your uh, receiver as regards to the UART because Unlike an F4, some of them versus some of them not, so it'll only work in some places. On an F7, it doesn't really matter, it just deals with it. Um, and this thing is crazy full of UART. So, 
we are going to use the ground, the live, and I'm going to put my receiver on hmm, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Uh, UART 2. So UART 2, RX 2, TX2, those two there. So I need to prepare those four pads. So let's grab our soldering iron. Clean. I mean, you can do it if you want to do this off the quad. It's completely up to you. Some people like to. Um, I prefer to do it in place. There's a ground. There's a live. There's a Boom. So those are the four we need for receiver. Okay guys, so let's get this receiver soldered in. I'm gonna turn it around a second here so you can see what's going on. Where is my twin And there goes my phone again. Love my phone. Right, so let's Sold on the soldering iron. Okay, so the ground is first. So ground wire straight there. As far as channel one and channel two is, is uh, concerned for the receiver, um, it really doesn't matter which way you get them around um, because the crossfire itself is completely remapped both. So if you've soldered them the wrong way around, so TX to TX and RX to RX, um, you can just go into the receiver and change them around. And your problem's fixed. All right. Oh, wait two seconds. Let's get that. Okay, let's separate them a bit. Crossfire, I've got a double sided sticky pad. Uh, move them at the way there. Remember, this is the one for the Unify. What I'm going to do, I'm going to stick the crossfire there at the back of the way. It's a shame that the FC isn't um, black because I was kind of going for that whole kind of stealthy uh, look on this build because everything else needs to be very dark. Uh, right, there you go. Let's stick that down there, nice and accessible. If you want to put a cable tie around it, you can. Um, and then for my Immortal T, it's personal preference where you like to mount it. Personally, I'll, I've always put mine um, out on the arm. Um, some people would say it's exposed to being knocked and stuff, but 
meh. But that's why I like to put it. Um, and what I like to do, um, of course everything you see here you can get on the website. Um, so the, I put a cable tie underneath the motor wires on that arm. Slide it underneath, like so. Put it through um, so that around there. And then if we flip it over, what I have, again, you can buy it on the site, a 3D printed uh, Immortal Team out. So what we're going to do is put that around there. Now these, slide over the top of there like that. Go. Lovely jubbly. Lovely and tight. And obviously, I mean you can put that anywhere up and down that arm, or you can actually put these on, on the center on the base plate here. Um take that off. So there we have it. And of course now we've got because it also acts as a foot as well. Um but we'll sort that out in another video. So there. So we've got Crossfire wired in and our Unified Pro cable sticking out, ready for the VTX. Uh, we've got an XT60 on. Oh, and on top of that, we need to put on a locking nuts. Actually, they're really loose. So what I'm going to do, because they're so loose, and obviously we don't want them undoing, mid-flight. This is thread lock. There you go. A blob on each one. And then catch. What's wrong with them? All thumbs. which I seem to have lost. Got another one. I had an ethics one here somewhere. And it's gone walkies. However, I have another one. So just knit them down just so they touch the soft mounts, a little bit of pressure, nothing, you don't want to go mad and start squashing these things, because obviously this is not going to do their job else. But yeah, once that uh, thread lock dries, they are not coming undone. So there we go, that's it for today. Uh, on top of that, so we had a nice red light today. Um, so to Tomorrow we're going to be doing the camera itself uh, and the camera mount on the front um, and then we've got the antenna mount and the VTX to do and we're pretty much all there. Um, but yeah, if you missed any of the previous ep episodes, obviously um, they will be listed in the links in below. But um, until then, happy flying.